Hi guys and welcome to another video. This one's going to be another how-to video about some work that I'm going to be doing on the camper van today. Um, now obviously it's locked down at the moment um, across the whole world pretty much and there is not a lot of time on being able to use this camper van and that's given me a bit of time to um, kind of think uh, about some of the ways I can do it to make it a bit more professional, some of the work I can do on it, and also to make it a bit safer. Um, now the van hasn't really been used for quite a long time now, normally we try and get away in it for the odd weekend and I'm obviously out doing photography in it. Um, now all this time it's kind of sat up, it's made me think, do I really need um, all my 12 volt system permanently live? Uh, obviously we have fuse boards and switches and things like that on this van but the majority of the 12 volt system does uh, remain permanently live um, and now that's something I want to address today I want to be fitting a 12 volt isolator switch just to make that system a bit safer a bit more professional when we leave the vehicle we can actually totally switch off that 12 volt supply to the majority of the electrics um, so that is what I'm going to be doing in this how-to video today. So hope you enjoy it and I hope you find it useful. I'll just quickly talk through the way I'm going to be doing that. Um, first and first, I bought this um, big row of switches, um, which is going to be fitted um, just above the panel here uh, on the kitchen, just underneath this unit. Um, and that is going to allow me to do a few different operations. Um, a few of the switches also be doing different functions. Um, and what I'm going to be doing is a switch here on the very end. That is going to be my isolator switch. Now it's a slightly different way of doing it because most isolator switches just tend to be a mechanical switch which you turn and it disrupts the, uh, the cable from the battery to your 12 volt systems. Um, this is going to be a bit more of a professional system. How we're going to do it is we're going to be using uh, this switch to control a relay. You could not just put all your electrics through this single switch. Um, it'd be far too much power for them. We have a 600 watt inverter. Um, we have a fridge or a cool box that draws about five amps. Um, anything else we use in the van really. Um, we probably only ever use the inverter up to about 300 watts or 200 watts or something like that. So in a, in relative terms we're probably only going to be drawing about 30 amp um, but it's far too much for the switch to handle so we need to run it through a relay now people that have seen some of the videos i've done in the past um, on electrics have probably seen me use relays quite a lot um, they're quite small this one is absolutely massive so this is a huge 200 amp relay it's far far overkill uh, i probably could have got away with a 100 um, amp relay but the bigger they are, the more able it will be able to cope with uh, the power supply and also in theory, the more reliable and safe it will be. Um, so you can easily over kind of rate your relays. It's not going to cause a problem at all, apart from the fact it's a bit bigger. All we're going to do on this is we're going to cut the supply from the battery. We're going to put one end of that onto this big terminal and the other end of the uh, terminal, we're going to have the cable going to the fuse board. And then this one here, the trigger side of the relay, we're going to have one end going to the neutral on the battery and we're going to have the other end going to um, the switch. And then that switch is going to be fed from a live on the battery. And we have to take that live from the battery or somewhere before this relay. Um, so what I probably will actually be doing is taking it, the live straight off the terminal on this one, the live terminal, the permanently live terminal. If we were to try and take the live from the fuse board, when we activate this switch, it's going to cause a weird loop where it's going to lose the power for the trigger um, and it's not going to stay on and it's going to do funny things. So we've got to make sure that the live coming to this is permanent even when uh, you isolate the electrics. Um, yeah, so really easy to fit really. In reality, all it means is I have to cut the, the main cable from the battery to the fuse board fit this in between with the, the two terminals. Um, one of these terminals needs to go to a neutral on the battery and the other terminal uh, just needs to go onto this one on the permanent live and that should, should uh, complete our system. <laughs>
Like we're slowly getting there. It's taken a lot longer than I thought it would. Um, I've already been down there now and tidied up the fuse board, done a few other things down and worked out some ways of wiring it up. Um, I've pulled off the main feed from the battery. There's two 2.5 mil cables that I've used. Um, I've pulled those off from the back of the fuse board where there's spade connectors connecting it. I've pulled those spade connectors off, managed to get both cables into a big um, yellow ring connector. So that's ready down there. That bit of it's probably done. Um, what it's going to be doing now is it's going to be going onto this cable that I've made up. And I thought I'd just put this segment in just to show you um, the cable I've made up basically. Um, so this is the business end of it. We've got this 100 amp fuse um, in this fuse holder here. Um, the lie from the battery, the spade terminal, which is now down by the fuse ball, which I was just talking about, it's going to go onto this one here, through the fuse, around here into this big spade connector, which is going to be going into um, that side of the relay. The other side is obviously then going to have a link from there to the fuse board. Um, and what I've also got is I've taken a link out of it, uh, fused as well, onto this one here. That's going to be running all the way down this um, cable um, onto my switch. And then when the switch switches it, it's going to put that power back down it onto this blue cable. And that is going to be going onto um, the spade terminal on the relay. Now all I have to do then is earth and put that other spade connector to a neutral. Um, and then that's it, that's pretty much done, that'll work. Yeah, so that's that bit done. I thought I'd just show off that cable and how it's kind of going to work for you so you can see it a bit better. Um, and continue fitting it now, screw it up. Next time I'll catch up with you will be um, when I'm testing it. So probably another hour's work for me here. I'll catch up with you in a bit and we'll see if it works. Hi guys, now it's pretty much all finished the work on it now. I've got all the wiring in, I've got the relay in, and I've connected it all up. Um, it wasn't too bad to fit in the end. The wiring's quite simple on it. It's just really fiddly where I've got this fitted and the van is actually underneath um, or in one of the small covers behind the inverter and by the fuse board. It's a bit difficult and tricky to get in there. When I come to fitting the relay by the or for the inverter, I might um, do a slightly easier option and fit it under the seat next to the battery. Um, it'll be easier to get to if I need to look at it in the future as well. Um, so that's pretty much it really. I'm not going to show you me fitting this light panel into the recess. There's no point. If you really want to see that, you can look at me testing through some of the, the stuff that, um, at the end when I've got all this fitted and I've done the other videos like I was saying about the inverter and the, the water heaters and stuff like that. Um, I'm just going to be showing you quickly how you wire up um, the light switches. Now if I turn them around, um, and you have to give me, I'm going to have to put some footage up so you can see this better. Um, now one side of the switch you've got three spade connectors and the other side of the switch you have two. Um, now those three spade connectors um, are the ones that you want to be putting your, um, your power supply onto. So ignore the two on one side at the moment, they are just for the LED. If you look at the one or the side of the switch has the three spade connectors, the two spade connectors are that are closer together. Um, one of the one in the middle isn't really in the middle, it's offset a bit. Those two that are closer together are your ones that you want to be connecting your device to. That is actually going to do the switching for you. Um, all the other spade connectors are, um, on the switch are literally just for the LEDs. Um, if you get the same switch as I do um, and you want to look at this because it will be helpful um, I will be putting a lot of the links up in the description for the stuff I've bought So if you do end up buying this switch panel Just remember that the two or the three on the right hand side Sorry, the two on that side that are close together are for switching every other thing is for um, Just the LEDs now to make the LED work. What you want to do is you want to take uh, a live from the point on the switch that is only live when you switch the switch on. So if you look at this cable here, 
Um, I've got my blue and brown cable, which I showed you the other side of a minute ago, um, which is obviously runs from here down into the cupboard. Now, the brown side brings up power from the fuse that I fitted down there. Um, so that puts power into the switch. Now the blue side of that cable is when the switch is switched, that puts power out of the switch back down into the relay. So if I take a little spur from this blue cable um, or the terminal on the switch and then put this to another connector, that will then put power into the LED light. What I need to do then is I need to run a neutral um, up to the other end of the terminal for it to give it kind of a circuit to make that LED light work. So this on the side of the switch that only has two terminals, they are for the LED light. If you put a live to one of them and a neutral to the other, that will give you your switch, that will give you your LED light, sorry. Um, if you put them on the wrong way because it's an LED, it won't work, so just swap the wiring around. So if we look at it now, we'll just be able to see that um, it works, it operates. You should be able to see it cutting the power out either side of me when I switch it on and off. You should be able to see there's no actual light coming up on there though. What I need to do is complete the circuit. I'm temporarily just going to connect this um, cable onto here, which is going to give me a, a circuit for you to look at. Um, now what I do is when I switch it on, you should see that I get that LED light there. And when I switch it off, it disappears. So that's how you wire them up. Um, so it's pretty much um, done really. You should be able to see now if I spin you around. Um, I've just got an LED light on here. One of the down lighters have to demonstrate. So now when I switch, it often neutralizes all the power in the van. Um, so we can use this as an isolator now when we're not using the van, um, just to cut all the power off and make it a bit safe. Yeah, so um, anyway, I hope you found it useful. I hope you found it interesting. Uh, hopefully this is gonna make it a bit more safer and a bit more of a professional setup. When this complete panel is finished on here, it's gonna be a lot easier to operate all these um, different devices. Thanks for watching this one. Please check out one of the ones going up in the future related to the other things it's gonna do if it interests you. Um, and I'll catch up with you on one of the future ones coming up.